Hi everyone, my name is Elodie Bouzbib. I'm a postdoc at Henri Darel. Today I'm going to present a paper called When Tangibles Become Deformable, Studying Pseudo Stiffness Receptual Threshold in a BR Grasping Task that we wrote with Claudio Pacchiotti from CNRS and Anatole Lecuyer from Inria. In the real life, whenever we want to interact, it is usually done through our bare hands, which make us perceive affordances and the inherent haptic properties of the object we are manipulating. In VR, haptics, our sense of touch, can provide this control and engagement. The more resemblance from the haptic properties, the more believable the experience. In this regard, obviously real objects, also called passive haptics, work as a charm and are shown to significantly enhance the virtual environments. So a first idea to instantiate this is to identically replicate the virtual environment with the physical one. For example, here, designers map the exact same environment as their real office one to provide a full tangibility of VR while the visual measurings could still change. So we have here a one-to-one -one virtual to physical mapping. So for one physical object, we have K virtual renderings at one position with one haptic property. Though it is a little counterproductive to replicate every single environment, right? So to make it more versatile, we can extend this mapping. We can therefore have robotic interfaces displacing one physical object to overlay N virtual object positions, but even here, the user would still perceive the same single haptic property of the CPOP. So how to change this into M haptic properties? The main objective of this work are to extend the inherent haptic properties of tangibles and to simplify the design of future haptic interfaces in VR. To do so, I promoted an approach called pseudo haptics or haptic illusions. Haptic illusions leverage the user's vision and its dominance over haptics to provide different haptic perceptions. It is referred to as illusions and is not perceivable by the user. They can be used with proprioception to redirect the users and provide a virtual remapping or for manipulating the rendering of object properties, such as size using a virtual distortion. These techniques can be used for many haptic features, such as weight or shape. I decided to focus on stiffness. Deformation is actually pretty easy to simulate visually, but its haptic rendering is complex. How to render the stiffness if you do not have all the adequate material? Even so, how do you even track it? Mechanically, rendering stiffness implies lots of sensors and actuators, so my focus is thus to use pseudo-haptics and leverage variable stiffness perception using single tangibles in VR. So the questions of this work are, can we elicit compliance in a non-compressible object? And if so, to what extent? We defined here the point of subjective visual haptic consistency as the value at which pseudo-stiffness stimulus is judged consistent by an observer 50% of the time. It's basically the threshold from which visual haptic illusions are indeed efficient. We also define the visual haptic consistency range as the interval in which the illusion is efficient. The hypothesis of this work are threefold. First, a rigid non-compressible object can be used for a wide range of stiffness and compliance in a fully immersive virtual reality grasping test. Second, Object scales impact the amount of pseudo-stiffness added to the object. And third, the user input force impacts the pseudo-stiffness perception. We only used a simple force sensors where participants could apply pressure and inverse kinematics on their virtual hand representation for the grasp interaction to be believable. We conducted a preliminary study to refine the visual haptic consistency range where participants knew about the haptic illusions that were induced. They were changing the stiffnesses by themselves to find out the appropriate range for which the illusion was efficient. We then used these results to refine the stiffnesses to test and find out the point of subjective visual haptic consistency in a user experiment where people thought that the objects were being changed between the trials. 
So we performed a wooden subject experiment with 15 participants and two scales to verify hypothesis number two and two tasks to verify hypothesis number three. We tested 27 stiffnesses in a random order for a total of 620 trials. Participants answered a two alternative false choice being the physical and virtual deformation are similar or different. And then they filled out their confidence in their answer with a scale from one to five. So we use this color coding for representing the confidence level. When participants felt it was different, we represent it in red. If it was similar, we represent it in blue. On the Y axis, we represent the stiffnesses. And on the X axis, we represent the distribution of the two AFC answers and their confidence. For instance, here at one Newton per centimeter, which basically means that you have one centimeter deformation for 100 grams applied. Pretty much no one believed it with a high confidence level. For the rest, as expected, the high values were believable and they decreased up to what we will define as the point of subjective visual haptic consistency. We noticed that this threshold is around this uncertainty area. And more precisely, we define it for K equal to 24 Newton per centimeter. So we therefore verify our first hypothesis with a visual haptic consistency range from 24 Newton per centimeter to at least 75 Newton per centimeter. For the object scales, we found that large and small objects showed the same thresholds, but with better results for larger objects than smaller ones. Yet, when looking at the force impact, if we look at the maximum force applied here on the y-axis and each object scale on the x-axis, and the task involved with the different colors, we will see that the force applied on large objects here on the left was significantly higher than the ones on small objects. Therefore, we cannot decorrelate the object scales and the user force inputs in this hypothesis. We globally show that free deformation is more efficient in small stiffnesses, potentially up to 12 Newton per centimeter, and reciprocally, the constrained deformation had better results than the free one in large stiffnesses with 100% similar answers at 16 Newton per centimeter. In terms of qualitative feedback, all participants mentioned that, that they're on their own that the stiffer objects were harder to compress and were quite surprised when knowing that the force thresholds to validate the compression were similar for all of them. So we show that the object scale in fact um, cannot be decorrelated from the user force input and the user force input does not impact the point of visual haptic consistency, but it does enhance its efficiency in larger stiffness ranges. All right, so we validated and discussed hypothesis and quantified tangible pseudo stiffness perceptual thresholds. But what does it really mean? In comparison with everyday objects, our results show that a tangible object in VR can be as compliant as silicon or rubber material or resins or even gummy bears using pseudo haptic techniques. The contribution of this work are a method to induce compliance into a tangible passive prop in VR, empirical results showing pseudo stiffness point of subjective visual haptic consistency of 24 Newton per centimeter, like gummy bears and raisins, and empirical results showing scales and force input influences on pseudo stiffness efficiency in VR. Thank you for your attention.